Hello everybody, welcome back to another light novel review. Today I am going to be discussing Wataru Watari's light novel series, volume number one in my youth romantic comedy, As Wrong As I Expected. Now there's, of course, this is typically referred to as Oregairu. There is, I believe it was my teenage romantic comedy snafu was the anime that was based on this. In this series, Hashiman Hikigayu is our main character and Essentially, his philosophy is, is that youth is a sham. He thinks that people use youth and ex as an excuse, basically, to excuse bad decisions, bad behavior, failures, all these things. He sees it as a way of not taking personal responsibility for anything and everything that you do. And so he follows a philosophy of self-isolation, where he is only responsible for himself. He only cares about himself. And he sees this as really kind of preparing him for the realities of adulthood. However, his teacher kind of doesn't see it that way. She thinks that his viewpoints, well, she thinks he's kind of damaged goods. And so she decides to force him to join a very special club. The club is called the Service Club, and it only has one other member, which is Yukina Yukino Shito. Now, the thing about Yukino is that she's this incredibly intelligent and beautiful girl, but she's probably, in terms of personality, just as damaged as he is. And he finds out that the purpose of this club is to pretty much help other damaged individuals solve their problems. Now this series is a... it's I wouldn't even know if I would say it's a romantic comedy really. I mean it, it's... it is wrong to assume that it is a... like the title pretty much advertises it right away. This story is about a bunch of really damaged individuals. It is very easy to allow yourself to dislike some of these characters because of their somewhat e over-the-top egos, because of how often they look down on people for following societal norms. But at the same time, you see cracks in their behavior that starts to lead you to wonder if perhaps their philosophy in life isn't so much based on their intelligence, as they like to think, but more on the traumas that they have suffered at the hands of others. So in a way, these characters, if you view it that way, they become almost relatable. I mean, they are taken to a certain extreme in terms of their behavior, but there is that element that you can relate to, that element of being segregated, that element of being hurt and so you do whatever you can to not be hurt again. And what drives this story is the relationships between the characters and to me it was also that sort of sense that I wanted to see just what was going to happen to these people. Like, are they going to, I mean I don't even know that I would say overcome, but it seems to me that they occupy a space that isn't exactly comfortable for anybody, for the people around them, and even for themselves to an extent. And so it's this idea of, can the service club help others, but can it also help its own members? This is probably one of the first sort of slice of life series that we've had in the official English market that doesn't have any sort of supernatural elements, or at least there's certainly none present in this first volume. So it really is all just about the characters and the situations that they get involved in. And I will say that there were quite a few laugh out loud moments for me throughout this book, particularly when a certain androgynous character is, is introduced and Hikigawa's like ongoing reactions to this character. There was lots to really enjoy about this book. And it's very intelligent. It's, you know, in terms of a pop culture, but not just pop culture, like it extends to literature and I'm talking like high literature, not just, you know, popular literature, but 
philosophical literature, it's very self-aware and it points out a lot of points and has a lot of references to different pop culture icons, to literature, and a lot of these are just thrown off one little lines that if you aren't familiar with the material, you wouldn't even really get it at first. In fact, uh, Yen On, to make our lives a little bit easier, has actually included a, it's, well, they call it a translation notes. And so at the back of the book, it includes the page and what their sort of line was and what exactly it's referencing. So if you're not familiar with the material, and I mean, some of it is classic Japanese literature. So obviously I had no idea what it was. So this was a lot of fun and actually really useful. And it's the first time I've really had to see something like this in a light novel because I wouldn't say that a lot of light novels that we have right now are that worldly aware. And it's probably because they're set in worlds that involve supernatural powers and stuff like that. So they're much more concerned with the world build building elements. This one, because it takes place in our everyday world with characters that are living everyday lives, they do throw out references to manga, to anime, to literature and everything else, which makes it really a lot of fun and a lot different than what we have with a lot of other light novels. Also, the book is written in first person from Hikigaya's point of view, and his observations just in general are awesome. Like, I don't think this book would have worked. I mean, I know I have said in the past that I somewhat prefer third person writing, but this book just would not have worked as well being written in third person because half the fun is the internal mo monologue that Hikigaya runs throughout this whole thing and when he meets other characters and like I said all of these sort of references to literature and anime and everything else that just makes the book a lot of fun. And now I'm just gonna, I don't comment often on artwork and I know some of you have actually asked me to but I, I have to tell you something. So. I open up the book and this is like one of the first images that I see is like a pinup of two of the main female characters. And I kind of wondered if that meant that I was going to be in for a lot of eshy and that kind of stuff. And amazingly and thankfully, the book doesn't resort to those sort of lowbrow cheap tricks. It The comedy is really about the dialogue and the interactions and the reactions of the characters. It doesn't shoot for lowbrow stuff. It It's not all about just like boob jokes and, you know, hentai-ish or eshy-ish type situations. Again, I was kind of surprised by this book. I When I first saw it, I kind of thought that I was in for a very stereotypical harem physical comedy type series. And definitely that is not what you get in volume number one. It is much more highbrow and character-based humor than a lot of other stuff. So I really like this book. Um, I, I think I liked it a little bit more than I expected to. I know a lot of you were really hyping the series and saying that it was an awesome series. So I did have somewhat high expectations, but I really thought that there would be a lot more into it that was cliche and typical of rom-coms out of Japan, but uh, but no, this one had some really good surprises to it, and I really enjoyed it. So those are my thoughts on volume number one of my youth romantic comedy as wrong as I expected. In my next video, I'm going to be reviewing volume number seven of Reiki Kawahara's Excel World. So I hope you'll join me for that video. If you're new to the channel, Click on subscribe so you can check out all of my future light novel reviews. I do have links to my old reviews as well as my manga reviews. And I don't just read books, I like to write them as well. You can check those out at the link above as well. So again, thank you so much for joining me for the video. I look forward to seeing you in the next one. Until then, bye bye for now.